Hello everybody, hope you've had a good week. Uh, it's Friday already um, and it's now time for the uh, assembly. Before we get into the assembly, I'd just like to share some news with you uh, around, the, uh, around the school. Last week, we obviously had the, uh, the winter sports um, and I'd just like to say well done to Hollowell in year seven, to Gleg in year eight, to Bennett in year nine, and to Gleg in year 10, who won their respective uh, competition. So well done to everybody involved with that. Um, as well, obviously, we've got a busy time at the moment for the, the year 11s and the year 13s especially. Um, so well done to everybody involved with the, uh, the exams. Uh, that includes all the students around site as well uh, for keeping quiet and respecting the, uh, the exams that are going on. So well done with everything there, everybody. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll get through them uh, eventually. So well done again. We're moving to the uh, the assembly then today. So um, focus for today is this uh, quite a poignant question, really. So what is the most important thing in life? So if you have got the time to do this, if you would just like to pause it here and you can have a little chat um, in your form to share a few ideas on what you feel is the most important thing in life. OK, so one of the things um, that lots of people say, especially young people, actually, is this going about money. Um, Owning things, having nice cars, nice houses, um, you know, being rich. That's one of the big things that people uh, people talk about. Um, so if that's the case, then um, how can we uh, how can we get this money that we're after? So there's various different ways. Um, so we could rely on a bit of luck. Um, so the lottery. Uh, chance of winning that at the moment is uh, one in 45 million, though. So chances of, uh, of that happening fairly slim being a mathematician. Um, I know they're not very good odds. Hopefully the rest of you are aware of that as well. Um, so winning the lottery, yeah, it would be nice, but maybe it's not going to happen. Um, other option we've got there, um, we are family. So lots of people have uh, you know, money in the family, maybe. Um, we have the royal family uh, that stand out there. And obviously they're not going around working, um, although Prince Harry might be uh, might be doing a bit more of that, obviously, at the moment. But uh, the rest of the royal family, you know, they're not doing jobs and various things, either. They've got that money in the family that they can, uh, they've got, which is quite nice for them. Um, most of us, however, um, are going to rely on other forms, OK? Um, bottom one we've got there is the, uh, the stock market, possibly. So you might think about doing some trading, doing some investing, um, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, but that's one way, obviously, you know, various people make money. But most people tend to uh, tend to rely upon uh, on a career, upon a salaried job, um, and you can see they've got a nice little picture with a selection of different uh, different options on there, um, and that's kind of like I said, that day to day, month by month salary is what we uh, what we rely upon. Um, so one of the things that came out of lockdown um, was uh, not during lockdown, I should say was a huge increase in the amount of uh, casual traders. So people that um, got involved with uh, with the stock market and um, started doing some investing themselves whilst they had time at home, um, introducing lots of things through the different apps that are available um, and to do with, you know, just the, the ease of, uh, of the systems that were put into place because of that. And uh, because of the pandemic, there was a massive market crash at the start and then Everything started, oh, well, not everything, lots of things started to kind of like bounce back in different ways, different areas. Um, and one of the big ones, Amazon and Tesla were huge. So if you kind of, if you're interested in this side of it, you could have a little look into those and see just what happened um, when lockdown came in with those shares. So there's lots of people that are kind of, like I said, trying to get this money, trying to uh, trying to invest and, uh, and come for the next, you know, next thing that's going to rock it up. Um, so what I want to do, one of the key things that they, uh, that they talk about um, in investment is this thing called compounding, so the power of compounding. So I'm just going to uh, show you a little video now. We all know that get-rich-quick schemes rarely end in a fortune. But the good news is you don't need a secret formula or gimmicky investment tool to boost your savings. All you need is time, the most powerful tool you have. Let's assume that starting today, you decide to save £150 a month. After 10 years, you've saved £18,000 and you stop adding more money, but leave the rest invested. Now, let's say you told a friend at the start and tried to get them to do the same. They had other priorities, a big holiday, a new kitchen, so decided saving could wait. All in all, 15 years pass before they decide to take your advice and start saving £150 a month. They feel they can save for longer, so they carry on saving monthly for the next 25 years, putting away £45,000 in total, two and a half times as much as you. 
Over the long term, you might hope your investments would grow by 5% a year on average. This of course is not guaranteed, but for this example we'll assume both you and your friend enjoyed these returns. 40 years have now passed since you first started saving. Who do you think is better off? The obvious answer is your friend, they've saved much more. But the incredible power of compounding means that's not the case. You have £100,480. This costs you £18,000, which means your investments have grown by £82,480. Whereas your friend has £88,218, but it costs them £45,000, so their investments have only grown by £43,218. They have £12,262 less than you, despite saving £27,000 more. So, by waiting 15 years, they are £39,262 worse off than you, despite saving for longer. Remember that this is just an example, not a projection. So the best time to have started saving is 10 years ago, but the next best time is today. You can start regular savings with as little as £25 a month. Um, you can see there, um, power of compounding. So simple little things, making small changes, small investments, um, and leaving them over time can have a big impact. So that's one of the ways, like I said, that lots of people uh, started to look at money, trying to make the money that they need. Um, so if that's the case, and if that's what we need, money's important, life now is sorted. So we're happy, done, we can stop the assembly and move on. However, the more I looked into this, the more we started to see a few little problems creeping in. It's not as simple as that. Um, people's desire for, for money and for having things, earning things, the next best thing, um, you know, the new iPhone, whatever it may be, just kind of keeps coming and coming. And there becomes that moment where just nothing satisfies that need. Um, stock markets as well, as we, uh, as we already know, uh, can crash. You can have issues with that, so investments aren't secure, as we've seen in the video there as well. Um, winning the lottery, there's so many reports of people having issues when they've become rich through the lottery, falling out of family, friends, and all the problems that go along with that. Um, in terms of the investment side, this was something that came out fairly recently, actually looking at uh, some of the, the younger investors um, that were trading for, uh, for a company. And they were saying that they were expected to do, well, they were working 72 hours, but some of them were doing like 95 hours a week um, working, trying to, you know, get the next uh, the next stock or figure out the, you know all this details to do with the next stock that's going to take off and various things like that and the commitment and the time that went into that just obviously impacted so much upon their lives um, just in this hunt for, for money so there was um, I found this article um, it was in the business insider by this guy called uh, Raphael Badzing um, and um, he managed to speak to 21 different billionaires um, I think it took him about five or six years to do in the end um, and he just kind of interviewed them and just discussed, you know, general things about them. And one of the things that they spoke about more often than money um, was was this thing about being happy, so feeling happy. Um, and these were kind of the key things that he uh, he kind of concluded after his uh, after his research that he did. So billionaires, um, obviously, they've got plenty of money. So aside from that, um, they have choice, opportunity. Um, and strong relationships, and they're the key things that he found um, when he combined these things together that made them uh, made them happy, um, and that's what they were talking about. So this thing to do with you know they love the work um, and the opportunities that that creates. So they found something that they enjoy doing, and they also the bit at the bottom most importantly for me really um, was this thing about the regularly practice habits um, that breed happiness. So they do things that make them happy. They don't just kind of get stuck in one thing. Um, you know, just focused upon making money, making money. It's about the bigger picture. It's about doing things as well, aside from that, um, that make them happy. Um, I also subscribe to The Economist, which is uh, it's great if you like graphs and various things like that. So they've, uh, they do lots of, lots of different things to do with stats and things in The Economist. So this is, uh, this is something I've, I found the other day. Um, linking into this kind of theme really about you know, money and happiness, or money versus happiness really. It's not a versus, it's, uh, you know, they go hand in hand. However, um, yeah, it's just interesting. They picked up like the top five jobs. So you can see there the ones that are identified in the colours. Uh, and the most, um, well, the top job there where people are the most happiest is the clergy. 
Um, and you can see you've got your scale going across there, your happiness um, on the let's get a bit of maths involved on the y axis. And then on the x axis, you've got your salary going across there. So you can see, even though you know the salary that they're getting isn't that high, they're happy. Same type of thing for these other jobs that, that we've got going here. So company secretaries, uh, agriculture and horticulture managers, uh, quality assurance managers. So these jobs here are in the bottom section in terms of obviously the, the full scale of, uh, of what we've got in terms of the salaries, but they're very, very happy. And then you've got obviously, the, well, you can say they're the CEOs and the senior officials along here earning lots of money, but not anywhere any happier according to this uh, this research and these companies over, and these uh, jobs over here. So it's all about a balance. That's what this is getting at, really. It's, um, it's not just about having that drive to get more and more money. It's about thinking about the other things. What actually makes you happy? It's not just going to be money. It's going to be, you know, the bigger picture and some other things that are around that as well. So what can we learn from this? Money is part of the part of society. Um, we do need it. Um, there's no point uh, pretending we don't, you know, whether you like it or not. It is one of those things that is important for us, uh, you know, to live our day to day lives and to give us our choice and opportunities that, uh, that we want. Um, however, speaking to the billionaires and speaking to, hopefully some of you said this anyway, when we kind of uh, had that time at the start, hopefully you realise that happiness is actually what most people want really. And I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. Um, it's not just about one thing or another, it's about being happy in lots of different things. Um, money and owning things isn't everything. And it doesn't guarantee happiness. Um, so just having that drive to get lots of money doesn't guarantee that you're going to be happy once you've got it in the end. So we need to think about the other things as well. And the whole thing about compounding, really, it is important. I, th I think it's a really important principle um, to do with um, little little and often, starting early. That's the main thing that I want to, to focus upon here, really. And focus on this, uh, what I've said here, this well-being compounding. So do things that you enjoy. Um, focus upon the little things, start early. So you're all young, um, you've all got plenty of time ahead of you to kind of do nice things, to build up this uh, this amount of well-being, this compounding of this well-being um, that you have. Um, try different things, um, you know, make the most of the opportunities that, that come your way um, through school or whatever it may be in life. Um, and just like I said, set a bit of time aside for yourself um, and just regularly revisit that um, and it will build as the compounding model showed you, um, into you know a bigger thing and magnify you know the benefits. Um, it's not just about obviously you know the financial compounding um, that we've uh, that we saw in the video. Now um, this guy here, some of you recognise the name, so Warren Buffett. So this is a massive icon in terms of investment as well, and he was uh, he's one of the richest people um, in the world, and he has been for a very long time. Um, people have come, gone up and then drifted away, but he's kind of been steady away there. And he's, uh, he's an, investment, an, an investor, really. Um, and he's always gone for kind of the slow and steady approach. And this is a really important quote that, he, uh, that he's got here. As you can see, he's the happiest people do not necessarily have the best things. They simply appreciate the things that they have. And I think that's a really important message, especially from somebody like him, um, to, uh, to get across to you today. So I hope you've enjoyed the assembly. hope it's... Uh, Raise a few interesting points for you. I just want to remind you this weekend is a bank holiday, so we do not expect to see you back in school until Tuesday next week. Hope you enjoy the extra day off. Thank you.